Obama's visit is really historic because it's the first time that we have a sitting head of state in the US come to Kenya. But more than that, this is Barack Obama, who, as we all know, is half Kenyan. And so this is more like a homecoming um, for Barack Obama. Kenyans are excited. We see him as one of ours. And so we, you know, Kenyans are very, very affectionate towards the president. And I think it's going to be a very exciting few days. The visit of President Obama is going to be um, very much focused on trade. And as an entrepreneur, I think it's going to be um, specifically for us business people. Um, the, the issue of direct flights between America and Kenya is going to be huge. There's a real possibility that at the end of the, this visit, we will see an agreement reached. And I know for the uh, flower growers and horticulture, that is a huge market. So I'm really excited to see the possibility of America becoming a new market for export um, from Kenya. I think that was a really historic um, point in the relationship between the US and, um, and Africa because the center of gravity kind of moved. Uh, it was much more about partnership as opposed to an aid sort of um, situation where America was giving Africa something. This was where Africans were participating as equal partners, and I, it really cemented the way forward in that relationship. So I do think um, the last year's summit was very, very historic, and lots of relationships were made, and we'll see, just see that continuing um, as, we, as we go forward. It's been really fascinating. I represent Erin Energy, who are based in Houston and quoted on the New York Stock Exchange. And we recently, three years ago, got our licenses to explore in Kenya. We have four blocks, um, two in Garissa and two in offshore Lamu. And the process so far has been really incredible. The government has been really supportive. And we are looking to, you know, we're looking forward to being part of the history and of writing the story of oil in East Africa. Terrorism, you know, is really not confined to Africa. And this year alone, we've seen ter terror attacks in France, in Thailand, um, in South Carolina, and of course, we've seen them in Nigeria and in Kenya. So I think we need to be careful in just talking about the African terrorism story. Um, the interesting thing about terrorism is that in spite of the, the attacks, I don't think investors will stop investing in Africa because of the size of the market, because of the untapped potential, and because of the numbers. You know, we have a huge population on the continent, and investors are seeing that as, as, a, as, a, as a very worthwhile investment. Um, I think the governments will start working more closely together, so security is going to be a big part of the agenda, and I think we will hear that at the end of President Obama's visit. Um, but I don't actually see that investors will stop investing in Africa. The issue of corruption, I don't think, can be answered by international investors. The issue of corruption can only be answered by African leaders. Uh, the, the way I look at it is that investors need to continue investing in Africa and standing up to refusing to pay bribes, because that only helps to support the efforts that are already being made by our leaders. And so I see it as you know, part of a process where we can all come together and obviously try and um, ensure that corruption does not add to the cost of doing business in Africa. There's been a, um, a sharp rise in the number of Africans that do want to come back. Um, opportunities, as we've said, in Africa are huge. They're coming back with expertise that we might not have here. And there's a really interesting term that President Mahama used, um, President Mahama of Ghana used recently when he spoke at Oxford, the Afropolitan. It's the young African that has been out, that has got skills and exposure, and they're coming back and adding to, um, to the development of, of the continent. So I think it's very, very exciting to have um, Africans coming back to take up the challenges of you know, jobs, leadership, and to actually create a new Africa.
Well, obviously Kenya's home, so yeah, that is the favorite. I love Ghana, um, that's probably my second favorite. I go to Nigeria often, and I think Nigeria is, you either love it or you hate it, I love it. There's a kind of craziness to it, there's a hustle factor, and I think because I'm a hustler, I really, really enjoy, I enjoy Lagos, I love South Africa. Um, but you know, the whole continent is really, really special, and I feel very um, proud to be able to call Africa home.